Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, we are going to discuss about residential status of an SSE. First of all, residential status is determined for the purpose of determining incidence of taxes to be paid by an SSE. Here, it means finding out if the person is resident of our country or not. Determining residential status becomes necessary so as to decide whether the tax should be collected by him or not or to decide the incidence of taxes. Here, SSC is classified in four categories an individual, an HUF, Hindu undivided family, a firm and a company. Finding residential status of all these SSCs is very necessary. Now, there are three types of residential status. First, resident in India. Second one, not ordinary resident in India that we call it as a NOR. Third, non-resident of India. In short, it is NRI. We will come back to these later after we understand the conditions. Conditions for determining the residential status. So, basically there are certain conditions which determines the residential status of an SSE. There are two basic conditions and two subsequent conditions. First, let us discuss about basic conditions. The first basic condition is an individual should stay in India during the relevant previous year for a total period of at least 182 days. First of all, let us try to understand what is previous year. The previous year is the year before assessment year. Suppose 2019-20 is the assessment year then the previous year will be 2018-19 so here the condition is an SSC must stay in India for at least 182 days in the previous year if he stays more than that then it's okay but if he stays for lesser than 182 days the first basic condition will not be satisfied second basic condition is an individual should stay in India during the relevant previous year for a total period of at least 60 days and he should have stayed in India for a total period of at least 365 days during the four previous years immediately preceding the relevant previous year. Here it means an individual can stay for only up to 60 days in the previous year but he should stay for at least 365 days in last four previous years. Here, immediately preceding the relevant previous year means if previous year is 2018-19, so relevant previous years will be 2018, 2017, 2016 and 2015. So, in these four years, he must stay for at least 365 days in the country. So, these are the two basic conditions for determining the residential status. Now, let us talk about subsequent condition. The first subsequent condition is an individual should be resident in India in at least two out of ten previous years immediately preceding the relevant previous year. Here, it means an individual must stay in, it, in the country for minimum of two years out of previous 10 years. It is not specifically mentioned that in the first two years or last two years, but within 10 years preceding previous year, he must be staying in the country. If previous year is 2018-19, so from 2008-9 2018-19 he can stay for any two years second subsequent condition is an individual should have stayed in India for a total period of 
at least 730 days during the seven previous years immediately preceding the relevant previous year. It means a person can stay for 730 days during the seven years preceding previous year. Like in the previous condition, if he cannot stay continuously for a certain period of time, he can stay irregularly but for minimum of 730 days in the previous 7 years. Now, now, if a person satisfies any one basic condition and both subsequent conditions, he will be treated as a resident of the country. If a person satisfies any one of the two basic conditions, but fails to satisfy both the subsequent conditions, he will be called non-ordinary resident. If an individual fails to satisfy any of the basic condition, means if he does not satisfy even a single basic condition, then he will be treated as a non-resident of India. In general terms, we call him a NRI. So basically, satisfaction of one basic condition is necessary to be called as a resident or a not resident ordinary resident now let us have a look at some examples for determining the residential status of individual so the first situation is mr y is a citizen of america was appointed in india on 1st april 2008 on 31st Jan 2016, he went to Australia on deputation for a period of three years, but left wife and children in India. On 1st May 2017, he came to India and took with him his family to Australia. On 30th June 2017, he returned to India and joined his original job on 2nd Feb 2019. What would be his residential status for the assessment year 2019-20? Now, we are asked to determine the basic residential status of Mr. Y only for assessment year 2019-20. So, let us draw a small table. In that first column is year for which residential status should be determined. Second column is number of days Mr. Y stayed in India during that particular year. And third column is for his residential status. So now, in the year 2019, Mr. Y returned to India from Australia on 2nd Feb 2019. Right? Means, from 2nd Feb to the end of the assessment year, that is up to 31st March 2019, he stayed in India, uh, which is 58 days. Now, let us check with the basic conditions first. First condition is, he should stay minimum of 182 days in previous year. So here, clearly this condition is not satisfied by him. Second condition is, minimum of 60 days he should stay in the previous year and 365 days in preceding four years from previous year. So he did not satisfy this condition as well. When an individual do not satisfy any of the basic conditions, he will be treated as a non-resident. So here Mr. Y is a non-resident of India. Now, let us have a look at the second example. Mr. X is a citizen of India who has been serving in Delhi office for the last 15 years. On 20th 4, 2015, he is transferred to London office and he leaves India on the same day to take charge of that office. He is again transferred back to Delhi office and came to India on 12 
9, 2017. What will be his residential status for the previous years? 2015-16, 2016-17, 2017-18 and 2018-19 by applying the current provisions. Now here in this question the residential status of various years are asked. So again we can determine with the help of an table. In the first column we have years. In the second column we have dates from which he stayed in India. In third column we have number of days he stayed in India during that particular year. In the fourth column we have residential status. So in the year 2015-16 he left to London on 20th April 2015. So it means he stayed in India from 1st April 2015 to 20th April 2015. So here he stayed only for 20 days in India. Here again he is not satisfying any of the basic conditions so he will be treated as a non-resident for the year 2016. For the year 2016-17, Mr. X did not stay in India even for a single day. So he is clearly treated as non-resident. In the year 2017-18, Mr. X returns to India on 12th September 2017 and then he stayed in India itself. So from 12th September to 31st March, he stayed in India and which means 201 days. So he fulfills the first basic condition now. Let us check with the subsequent conditions first subsequent condition is he must be resident in India for at least two years in previous 10 years here Mr. X was not staying in India only for the year 2016-17 remaining all other years he was staying in India so he fulfills the first subsequent condition the second subsequent condition is he must stay for at least 730 days in previous 7 years. So he satisfies the second subsequent condition as well. So he is treated as a resident for 2017-19. In the year 2018-19, full year he stayed in India so again he satisfied both basic conditions so and as well as subsequent conditions so he is treated as a resident so here he stayed 365 days whole year and he treated as resident okay guys so this was all about today if you found it helpful please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We also cover various other subjects on our channel. So do watch them and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.